Hello, in this video, I'm going to take this example, which is currently I called a brightness mirror, where each pixel of the image is drawn as a rectangle. Brighter pixels, bigger rectangle. Darker pixels, smaller rectangle. I'm going to turn this example into what I'll call the checkbox mirror. So instead of drawing to an HTML5 canvas based on a video source or an image source, I want to create DOM elements, checkboxes that get checked or unchecked based on the brightness of a pixel. And incidentally, while doing this, we're going to look at an image processing effect called a thresholding effect. So I'm just going to dive right in um, if you, uh, into this code example, which was covered in the previous video, which you can go and back and watch if you haven't. But I'm going to dive right in and start making it. So let's go over to the code. And the main thing, the main sort of piece here in the code is that for every pixel, I'm getting a brightness value. That brightness value is the red plus the green plus the blue divided by three, the average of the red, green, and blue components of the color. So a threshold effect is an effect where you say, ah, there is a given threshold, 127. Any pixel that has a brightness over 127, I want to do something. Any pixel that has a brightness less than 127, I want to do something else. Typically, I might assign the pixel value for anything over 127 to white and anything less than 127 to black. So let's do something like that. I can say if bright is greater than threshold, fill 255. So just anything above 127, make it 255. Anything below 20, 127, make it zero. Now I could set pixels, but since I'm doing drawing stuff, I'm not going to bother with setting pixels. I'm just going to go, I don't need to do this mapping anymore to a size of a rectangle. I'm just going to go right down, get rid of this fill, and just draw a rectangle at the full size that is either white or black based on that threshold. So let me zoom back out. Let me refresh this, and we should see now you can sort of now you see exactly what I'm talking about. Each rectangle in the screen is all, is either white or black, and you can see how it's white or black, white or black, and you can see how I'm getting the sort of contours of the video, almost like a silhouette, a low resolution silhouette with this threshold effect. Now one thing about it, you'll notice if I go back to this example that I hard coded a threshold value of 127. What would probably be more useful is to have a slider so that you could adjust that threshold based on you know, whatever this sort of existing video is. So let's actually do that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called slider. In P5, an easy way to place a slider in the browser is with the create slider function. Of course, there's a zillion other ways you can get a slider there, but this is just one. I'm going to say slider equals create slider. And when you make a slider, you need three values. The minimum value for the slider, the maximum value of the slider, and where that slider starts. So 0 is the minimum, 255 is the maximum, and we'll start it right there in the middle at 127. So if I go back and refresh, you can see there's a slider down here now that I can move around. The issue is I want to take the value of that slider, and I want to um, I want to assign it to the threshold. And that's actually a really easy thing for me to do right now. because. Here, I said threshold equals 127. All I have to do now to change that is say threshold equals slider dot value. The value of the slider is the threshold. Sometimes code, it just reads like language in its own sort of way, if you read it backwards. Um, so now, if I hit refresh, you can see here, there's the image. And I'm trying to look at the camera, look at this. But as I slide it up, you can see that threshold is changing. And you can see now, with a lower threshold, all of the pixels that are rather bright behind me are getting white. And actually, only my shirt, which is kind of dark, and my hair, which is kind of dark. And you can see this is what the actual video is, right? All of those dark pixels are getting assigned um, a, black, uh, a black value. So I, I kind of want to um, remember what this value is. So I can actually just here in the console type slider.value to see 77. I kind of like this as a threshold value. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to go and change the slider to start at 77. Of course, I can still adjust it. But now each time I hit refresh, it'll just start right at 77. OK, so now we have this thresholding effect. The thing that I want to do is I want to take each of these rectangles that I'm drawing in this canvas and not have it be a canvas with shapes and colors that I'm drawing. I want to actually make DOM elements, checkbox DOM elements. So let's look at how we do that. If I go back to the code uh, here, I'm recording this. Yes, OK, just checking. If I go back to the code, see how I said create slider? There's also a P5 function called create checkbox. I'm just going to 
toss that into setup, and you can see, look, there's a checkbox now. There's a checkbox there. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a lot of checkboxes. In fact, I want a checkbox for every single pixel in the video. So I need a loop to make checkbox after checkbox after checkbox. So I'm going to go back to the code and I'm going to say, now what should I loop through? How many checkboxes do I need? Well, I need one for every x and every y pixel. So I need as many checkboxes as the width and the height, width times the height of that video source. Um, I was going to draw a diagram, but I think you're with me. So um, one thing that I think would be useful is actually to just keep track of uh, variables for the grid. So what we've got here, so I have this whiteboard and I insist on using it. So in other words, I want a checkbox and there's a certain number of columns, right? And a certain number of rows. And those map to the width and height of the video. So what I think would be useful is to have variables called columns and rows so I can just keep track of that number um, throughout my code because I'm going to need to use it at a bunch of different places. So what is um, columns, the number of columns is the width of the canvas, but the canvas is going to go away. So I'm going to say 640. It's, fact, it's funny how I could, I could actually just sort of, interestingly enough, you know what I just realized? These, this should be actually a hard-coded value. So let's think about what is uh, 640 divided by 16? You know, I could probably do that math in my head, but I got a console here, 40. So let's say we're going to have 40 columns and 30 rows. That's kind of a reasonable number of checkboxes. So, uh, so my video definitely needs to be the size of columns, rows, and I don't need to worry about all of that math anymore of scale of canvas, because the canvas is going to go away. I'm going to leave it there right now because it's useful to have it there as a reference. So now what I need to do is I need to say for every column and for <laughs> every row create a checkbox. And dun, 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 dun. There we go. So now look at this. Look at all those checkboxes. So I now have a checkbox in the browser page for every single pixel. But they're not really organized through by any logic, right? They're just all next to each other, right? And so I need them to maintain the same grid, right? I need to have exactly the number of checkboxes in the first first row, the second row, the third row. So I need to figure out some way of doing that. So one way of doing that, I knew I had a use for this whiteboard, is that let's say I have, I have this web page, right? This is the browser. And what's happening when I call create checkbox is it just sticks a checkbox in the page. Then it sticks another one, then it sticks another one. I'm doing that millions, of, not millions of times, 40 times, 30 times, you do the math, right? And it just keeps doing that. It gets to the edge of the page, it wraps to the next one. What I want to actually do, I think, is establish a div. A div being a, a container, a box, an area in the web page. Maybe I'll call that div mirror. And I want to be able to always put the checkboxes in that div. That way I could control some style of the div. It's width and height, it's position on the page, all of that sort of stuff. So I think it would be useful to put a div. Now I could say create div, because P5 has a function create div to put a div in the page. But I think this might be a moment where it's actually easier to just dig into the HTML itself. So I've gone to the index.html file that's associated with this particular sketch. And I'm actually just in the body. Right here, I'm going to add a div. And I, I'm going to say div id equals, woo, <laughs> zoomed in way too much, id equals mirror. So I, the id is very important. I need to give that div an id so I know how to reference it from my JavaScript code, from my p5.js code. So I want to put all the checkboxes into that particular div. So let's do that. Uh, whoops, um, let's go back to, sorry, I need to go back to the JavaScript code and I need to, I'm just going to, I need to assign a variable to that checkbox, take that box, that checkbox I made, put it in a variable, say box.parent mirror. And the parent function, what it does, it say this DOM element you've just made, put it inside that div. So that div, the mirror div becomes the parent to those checkboxes. And if I run this now, you can see there they are. Now you're noticing they're above because the canvas and everything else gets created after that particular div. Now what this allows me to do if I go back to the HTML file is add some styling for that div. So 
pound or hash mirror. This is CSS. Yeah, I'll re refer you to my CSS tutorial videos. But I can do some things like, say, uh, width. And I'm going to make it a fixed width of 800 pixels. I think I kind of worked this out earlier today. I think that's going to work about right. And, you know, trial and error would probably get me that number. And also, just so I can see it for a moment, I'm going to give it a background color, like something kind of light, um, just so we can see that that div is there. I'm going to hit refresh. Now you can see that that's the container, essentially, the box, the div, and all the checkboxes are there. And you can see it has a little bit of a background color. Now notice this didn't really work out. I didn't get the exact number of width to like make sure the the um, make that sure the checkboxes wrap appropriately but I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do something to like hundred percent be right about this so in the sketch I'm looking at every single column and every single row and what I want to do is when I get to the end of a row I want to add a line break an HTML line break so that the checkboxes then go onto the next row right I want to do you know 40 checkboxes and then put a line break. Oh, I came over here and I didn't change. Look, I'm over here now, sorry. Uh, I want to put 40 uh, checkboxes, then do a line break, and then do the next 40 checkboxes. Okay? So where do I do that in this loop? I need to put a line break. Well, incidentally, I actually have my loop. This is one of the few times where whether the X is on the outside or the X is on the inside is quite important, right? Because what I need to be doing is I need to be saying, uh, First, do the first row, then all the x's. Then do the second row, then all the x's. So y needs to be on the outside. I have to do all the x's for every y. So I've actually got to fix this and put y on the outside. And then what I can do is, after I do a whole set of x's, I can say uh, uh, line break equals create div, I'll just make a div with a line break in it, and then also put parent that to what? The uh, mirror. So now I'm guaranteeing that after every row of checkboxes, I get a line break. So now let's run that. Oh, that doesn't look right. Uh, you know what? Let's try using create span. I think the div has a lot of uh, stuff it's not like in line. So let's, let's use create span. There, that's better. <laughs> I knew I missed something. So I'm trying to put something in there that doesn't have any padding or line break around it already. And a span element allows me to do that. You can see 800 pixels was about right for this particular area. I could have, you know, maybe it's 750 or whatever. But now I can also get rid of that. I don't need to uh, see the background color anymore. That was just sort of for debugging. I can take that out. And we can see now I have a perfect grid of checkboxes, the exact number for every single pixel in that source video. And you can see here, you know, I can check them and uncheck them, but that's not what I want to happen. I want to maybe check the dark ones and uncheck the light ones. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I need to have a way of referring to those checkboxes. Like I made them all. And I put them on the page, but I didn't store anything. So I need an array. I need to keep track of all those DOM elements over time. How am I doing here? Uh, 13 minutes. I was trying to make this under 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be. OK, so I make an array called boxes. And what I'm going to do is for every checkbox that I make, I'm going to put that checkbox in the array. So I make an empty array, and I'm storing them all. So I now have this big array. If I refresh the page and I go over here to the console and take a look, you can see I have an array with 1,200 checkboxes in it because 40 times 30 is 1,200. 1,200 pixels, 1,200 checkboxes. There's a lot of them. They're all P5 elements, okay? And you can, there's all sorts of stuff associated with them. So now, how do I check or uncheck them? So right here, where I was saying, with my thre threshold effect, I was previously saying, if the brightness is greater than a given threshold, fill white, otherwise fill black. Instead, what I want to do is I want to say something like, check, oh, boxes, index, checked, false, boxes, index, checked, true. So what I want to do is I want to uncheck the bright ones, 
check the dark ones. And this is a P5 function. The checked function is a way of dynamically checking or unchecking a checkbox with code. If you don't give it an argument, it just gives you, returns you whether it's checked or unchecked, which is usually what you use a checkbox for. OK, but this index isn't exactly right. Remember, because the index was this thing where I was trying to look up a pixel, and the pixels are like RGB. So I need my own index. This index of looking up the pixels is different than the index in, into that array of, of checkboxes, unfortunately. So I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to call that a check index. And it is equal to x plus y times uh, the number of columns. And then I'm going to use that checked index. So there we go. What I'm doing is, in, I, I'm doing both actually. I'm going to get rid of the rectangle in a second. But instead of, ultimately, instead of drawing rectangles based on pixels, I'm checking and unchecking checkboxes. And I have an array of pixels that I have to look up the color one way using the x plus y times 4 whole nonsense. And I have to look up in the checkbox array a different way because there are not there's not an RGB and alpha for each checkbox or just one checkbox. <laughs> I had to say this to myself because it's very confusing. Okay, let's take a look now. Hit refresh and we can see here. Come on, video. There it is. So you can see that, right? There I am. I'm going to high five myself again. That's not really working, but you can see my face here <laughs> in checkboxes. Can zoom in a little bit. You can see those checkboxes are going um, up and down based on my face here. I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Okay, this was exciting. It worked. Sorry, I wasn't sure whether that was going to happen. So what I want to do now is just get rid of, I'm going to say, instead of create canvas, I'm going to say no canvas. And I'm going to get rid of oh, load pixels, which doesn't need to be in there. Uh, and I don't need background anymore. There's no canvas. I don't need uh, these fills anymore. I just want to simplify this. I don't need this anymore. And now, if we run this again, we should see just the checkbox mirror on the page. And you can see here I can play with that threshold still. You can see based on what I do with the threshold, <coughs> we get different sort of effects. And there it is, the DOM checkbox. Uh, I did it refresh again because I like that value of 77. The um, DOM checkbox mirror. So I don't know. So um, somebody had in a comment earlier said, oh, wouldn't radio buttons be better? Maybe you'll get a a better effect. You know, I would encourage you, can you do something weird with like sliders, make just regular divs, text on the page? What kind of, um, I would love to see people's Frankenstein creations of DOM elements of visualizing image data with no canvas and no pixels and no drawing, just manipulating DOM elements themselves. So give that a try. Tweet me or write in the comments if you make something. I would love to see how it turns out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>